I want you to imagine the space between Earth and the Moon like a long, dark highway. Halfway down that road, a silent traveler is about to pass by. No engine, no lights, just cold rock, moving faster than a rifle bullet. Its name is 2025 FA-22, and on September 18, 2025, it will sweep past Earth at a distance that sounds big, yet feels uncomfortably close when you understand the scale, about 523,000 miles, roughly 2.19 times the distance to the Moon, save but close enough to make you hold your breath. This is not a doomsday story, it's a reality check. A reminder that our planet lives in a neighborhood and the neighbors sometimes stroll past our front door. In the next 20 minutes, we'll explore what 2025 FA-22 is, how close it truly gets, why scientists say it's safe, and what it teaches us about our defenses, our blind spots, and our future. You'll also hear about the 1908 Tunguska Airburst, a blast so powerful it flattened forests in Siberia, and about Apophis, a larger asteroid that will skim even closer in 2029, still safe, but close enough to watch with the naked eye in some places. We'll look at a new visitor too, Comet C2025R2, Swan, brightening in the evening sky, and the strange interstellar passerby 3I Atlas. By the end, you'll see the pattern. Space is busy, Earth is ready, and curiosity, more than fear, is our best tool. Before we continue, make sure you subscribe, like the video, so you can stay up to date on all the latest mysterious space discoveries. 2025 FA-22 is a near-Earth asteroid, a rocky body whose orbit crosses or comes close to Earth's path around the Sun. It belongs to the Apollo family, which typically have orbits that are a little larger than Earth's and cross Earth's orbit as they loop around the Sun. Think of it like a runner on a nearby lane of a giant track, sometimes stepping across our lane, but at a different time and altitude. Timing is everything. Its closest approach this time is 523,000 miles. That's far beyond our atmosphere, beyond our satellites, and well outside the Moon's orbit. But in space terms, it's a tight miss the kind we study carefully. The asteroid's size is not exact. Most estimates place it roughly 120 to 280 meters across, about 520 feet as a middle value. That variability comes from how we measure dark, distant rocks using reflected sunlight and heat. The darker the surface, the trickier the estimate. Most important, this pass is safe. No models show an impact on this approach. Even so, scientists tag some objects like FA-22 as potentially hazardous based on how close their orbits can come and their size, not because an impact is predicted, but because they deserve close tracking. It's a pragmatic label. Watch this one carefully. Let's visualize. The Moon sits, on average, about 238,155 miles from Earth. If you stack two moons and add just a bit more, you get FA-22's closest pass. No, you won't see it with the naked eye. No fiery streak. It's a faint point of light, detectable by professional observatories and some advanced amateur setups. But invisibility doesn't mean insignificance. In orbital dynamics, a miss by a few hundred thousand miles is still a near miss because gravity listens to distance. That distance also teaches us something important, measurement confidence. The reason we can say safe with a straight face is because we have its orbit pinned down, tracked by multiple telescopes across multiple nights, fed into models that test millions of tiny variations. If any small path change could put it on a collision course this pass, we would see it in the math. We don't. What we do see is an opportunity, a chance to refine size, shape, spin, and surface properties as it flies by. So, close here is scientifically valuable. Radar, if geometry and power allow, photometry to study rotation, spectra to sniff out minerals. Each flyby is a free laboratory, a natural experiment where the subject arrives on time, whether we're ready or not. You might hear the term potentially hazardous asteroid, PHA, and feel a chill. Here's what it actually means. Astronomers use a simple filter. If an asteroid's orbit can come within 0.05 astronomical units of Earth's path, about 7.5 million kilometers, and it's big enough to cause serious damage if it ever hit, we flag it. That's it. It's a catalog tag, not a forecast. 
Why so cautious? Because the long game of orbits can surprise you. Asteroids take many years to loop the sun, small tugs, from planets, from sunlight, the Yarkovsky effect, even from a close pass with Earth, can shift a future path. The earlier we flag, the longer we watch, and the better we predict. For FA-22, the models for this approach are boring in the best way. No impact. The flag simply tells us, keep collecting data so the future stays boring. This system worked well in the past decade. Surveys like PanStars and Catalina discovered thousands of near-Earth objects. Missions like Neowise helped refine sizes using heat signatures. And DART even proved we can nudge a small asteroid on purpose. We are not helpless. We are, in fact, getting good at this. To understand why we care, travel back with me to Siberia, 1908. Just after dawn, a fireball crossed the sky and exploded high in the atmosphere roughly 5-10 kilometers above the ground, no crater, no impact scar, but the shockwave flattened trees across more than 2,000 square kilometers. People heard the blast from hundreds of miles away. This is the Tunguska event. The object was probably a stony asteroid, smaller than FA-22, entering Earth's atmosphere at many kilometers per second. The air burst released energy comparable to a large nuclear device, but without radiation. Survivors described a sky split by flame, a heat wave, then wind that knocked them to the ground. If the same event happened over a city, the loss would be unimaginable. Why bring this up? Because scale matters. A smaller object in the right or wrong place can do enormous damage. A larger one, if it hits ocean, can displace water and create a tsunami. In other words, what it is, where it hits and how it enters, angle, speed, composition, all decide the outcome. Most near-Earth objects never hit us, but history reminds us that rare is not never, and prepared beats lucky. Asteroids are dangerous because of energy, and energy grows with mass and the square of speed. Double the speed, quadruple the kinetic energy, that's why even modest-sized rocks can pack a punch. FA-22's estimated 24,000 mph, 10.8 kilonerds, is typical for near-Earth objects. Some arrive much faster. Composition matters too. A metal-rich body can punch deeper, a rubble pile might fragment or airburst. Entry angle changes everything. A steep angle drives energy down into the ground. A shallow angle spreads it out, raising the odds of an airburst like Chelyabinsk, 2013. A smaller event than Tunguska, but still enough to shatter windows and injure thousands from flying glass. The oceans cover most of the planet. Many impacts would splash down, with different risks than land impacts. The one prediction you can always make? No two events are identical. That's why modeling needs real measurements from each new flyby. So, when we say safe this time, we don't mean forget it. We mean log it, learn it, lower the odds next time. Every radar ping, every brightness curve, every tiny tweak in the orbit solution cuts our uncertainty. If one day we find a rock that does line up with Earth, we want the answer ready. How hard, from which angle, and how soon to push. Spotting a dim rock against a bright, moving sky is like finding a gray moth in a storm. We use wide field surveys that take repeated images of the same patch of sky. If a dot moves against the stars, we track it. Do that over many nights, from many places on Earth, and you can solve its orbit, a loop around the sun described by six numbers. From there, we run forward in time, testing where that loop passes relative to Earth's future positions. That gives us a close approach calendar. But we don't stop. As new data arrives, we refit the orbit. Think of it like narrowing a forecast cone during a hurricane. The more measurements we have, the smaller the cone. Radar, when available, is like switching from binoculars to laser tape measure. It pins down distance and velocity with stunning precision. For FA-22, optical tracking has made this pass decisively safe what we want now is bonus science, spin period, shape hints, maybe even color clues to its surface minerals. And quietly in the background, a growing network of researchers and agencies coordinates all this. Surveys to find, centers to calculate, observatories to confirm, and defense teams to plan. The system isn't perfect, but compared to 20 years ago, it's a different world. If FA-22 is a wake-up ping, Apophis is the alarm that tested our nerves years ago. 
On April 13, 2029, this larger asteroid, roughly 340 meters across, will pass only about 19,700 to 20,000 miles above Earth's surface, $31,632,000 kilometer. That's inside the orbit of some satellites. The odds once looked scary, but with years of tracking, the risk dropped to zero for 2029 and beyond for many decades. Still, its closeness makes it the science opportunity of a generation. For many, Apophis will be visible as it races across the sky, an object you can point out to friends and say, that's a real asteroid right now. Space agencies plan to study changes to its spin and surface from Earth's gravity tug, tiny effects that teach us how rubble piles hold together. The more we learn from Apophis, the better we can plan for anything that might appear on a worrisome path someday. Apophis is a reminder that close is not the same as dangerous. Precision wins, math wins, patience wins, and when you combine them, anxiety gives way to awe. Asteroids are mostly rock and metal. Comets are dirty snowballs, ice, dust, and organics that breathe when sunlight warms them. As they approach the sun, ices vaporize and carry dust away, building a glowing coma and a tail pushed by sunlight and the solar wind. That's why comets can grow bright fast, then fade or even break apart. They're fragile. Comet C2025R2, SWAN, has recently brightened to about the edge of naked eye visibility under dark skies, roughly magnitude 6, and can be hunted with binoculars near Spica in Virgo, not far from Mars when the geometry cooperates. In October, it may pass around 0.25-0.27 AU from Earth, safe, but close enough for a lovely show if it holds together. And that's the catch. Comets are unpredictable. They can flare, fade, or fragment with little warning. Enjoy the chase, but never overpromise a comet. Still, each bright comet is a living lab. By watching the color and shape of its tail, we learn about the gas and dust it sheds. Spectra tell us about its chemistry, water, carbon compounds, and more. These time capsules carry clues to the early solar system and to how water and organics might have reached young Earth. Every once in a while, the sky delivers something not from here. You might remember One-Eye Oumuamua in 2017 and Two-Eye Borisov in 2019, objects on hyperbolic paths visiting once and never returning because their speeds and directions are tied to other stars. Now we're tracking Three-Eye Atlas, another interstellar traveler. It is not a threat to Earth. Its closest distance stays far, on the order of astronomical units, but it's a treasure to science. Why? Because interstellar objects are samples from other planetary systems. Their shapes, surfaces, and behavior tell us how other solar systems build and break rocks, ices, and dust. If it flares, we learn about its ices. If it stays quiet, we learn about its crust. If its path shifts due to outguessing, we measure the faintest forces at stunning distances. For the public, the message is simple. The solar system is not a closed room. Sometimes visitors walk in, glance around, and walk out. We wave, we measure, we learn. If you've ever watched a leaf drift down a river, you know small pushes decide big paths. Asteroids work the same way. Gravity from planets nudges them. Sunlight warms one side more than the other, and the Yarkovsky effect acts like a tiny thruster, slowly shifting orbits over years. A close pass with Earth can tweak a spin or tilt, changing how sunlight pushes next time. Over decades, these whispers add up. That's why we track candidates like FA-22 for the long term. Today's certainty, safe, must become tomorrow's certainty as well. We do this by reobserving on each return, updating the orbit, and checking for keyholes, thin regions in space where a small miss today might set up a resonance that lines up an impact much later. Most objects never find a keyhole, but we only know that by watching. Meanwhile, technology improves. Better detectors, bigger surveys, smarter software. We're mapping more sky faster than ever. And with that map comes power. The power to warn, to deflect, or simply to understand. The right response depends on time. Years of warning mean gentle pushes. Days of warning mean we should never let it come to that. So, what should you do with all this? First, enjoy the moment. On September 18th, an asteroid the size of a city block will pass harmlessly by. Somewhere, a telescope will record its spin. Somewhere, 
a student will fit a new orbit and smile when the numbers snap into focus. That's how science feels. Quiet victories against the unknown. Second, look up. If you have dark skies, try to spot Comet Swan with binoculars. It might be faint, it might surprise you. That's the magic of comets. If not tonight, try again soon. For Apophis, circle April 13th, 2029. That evening will be a lesson in humility and precision. The sky showing us how close the universe can come without touching. Finally, remember the takeaway. We are not passengers. We are pilots of instruments, of models, of missions. FA-22 is a headline today because the system worked. We found it, we tracked it, we predicted a miss. The next chapter of planetary defense is already being written in labs, in code, in observatories you've never heard of. If a dangerous rock appears someday, we plan to meet it with numbers and nerve. Thank you for watching. Stay curious, stay kind, and keep your eyes on the sky. It's busier and more beautiful than you think. Make sure tap like, hit subscribe for more space mystery, and share this with one friend who loves space. Your support helps more people find accurate, no-hype astronomy.